Welcome to the farm. Welcome to the farm. I'm Justin, and today we're going to get back on this case tractor again. We left off last time with my carburetor fail, and uh, we're going to see if we can't fix that today. I got some new parts in. I got new spark plugs, new plug wires, new seal for the gas tank filler, and a new needle, main jet. So hopefully this will work. It, uh, it's a little bit different than the old one. The shape of the needle itself is a little bit different, so hopefully it'll still work. The only one way to find out, let's uh, put this together and see how it goes. So to avoid the same issue I had last time when I put this main jet in, I'm going to actually take the needle out of the base, and I'm going to thread the base in first, cinch that down, and then put the needle in. Hopefully, I won't strip out any of the threads then. Next, I'm going to go ahead and chase the threads in the top of the carburetor, so that way the new bolts should go in nice and easy without cross-threading. Alright, I believe our carburetor is just about ready to go in. I believe the this needle was the last thing I had to do. But before we go install it, I want to do the base adjustments. So the first thing we're going to adjust is the idle. And there's two parts of the idle. There's this screw here, which limits how far the uh, throttle can travel. And then there's this main jet here. And you're supposed to adjust them together. But it says for the adjustment here, you open it three turns open and that's about where you're going to find the right adjustment. So we lightly seat this right there and then we go one, two, three and that should set that and then we got to do our load adjustment so this you're supposed to just, again, seat right there. And it says one and a half turns. One, and a half. And that should be all I need to do. The float does not adjust, it's preset. And everything else we got to work on tweaking once we get it running, but this is supposedly, according to the manual, the base settings. So I think we're ready to go put this on the tractor. So before I put the rest of the fuel system together, I'm going to go ahead and hook the battery back up. Just because the fuel tank sits over the battery, it's a lot easier to access it without the fuel tank on. Alright, so the battery's hooked back up now. There's one more thing I want to test before I start hooking the rest of the fuel system up and start putting fuel in this thing. And I want to hook up the engine kill switch and make sure that's working and make sure it kills the spark. So this just attaches to the case of the magneto down here. like so, and then I'm going to pull a plug, hit the button, make sure we still got spark, flip the switch, make sure the spark's not there. Okay, we got spark there, switch is off. And we still got spark, so that switch is not working. So it's really not a surprise that this switch is not working. That's pretty corroded and it's all fairly rusty. I'm sure it's not making any contact in there. So we'll go ahead and take this apart 
and come up with another way to do it. So I decided to go ahead and make a whole new switch lead assembly and I'm leaving the leads really long so that way no matter which side of the tractor I'm on I can turn the switch over to that side and be able to kill the tractor wherever I'm at. So now I'm going to test out my new switch. I'm going to hook one end of the switch up to the negative terminal on the battery just because I know that's got a good path to ground right there on the block. And then the other part will just get connected to the magneto just like the old wire was. Okay, so now we're ready to test this again. All right, I got spark there. Let's see if this works now. Yep, still getting spark. So I don't think I got a good connection in that magneto. So I ended up taking the magneto cover off taking apart the parts inside that short that out, get them all cleaned up, brush them down real good, get nice bare metal, and put it all back together. Okay, we got spark. Still got spark. So I decided just to run with the spark the way it's working right now. If by some miracle this thing were to start, I can always just pull the plug wires off the spark plugs to kill the tractor if I need to. Now I'm going to go ahead and install the rest of the fuel system. The first thing I need to do is put the tank support back on the tractor over the battery. With the tank support in place, we can place the fuel tank and connect the fuel line. With the hood and everything off, there's nothing to hold the tank in place, so I'm just going to throw a strap over it to keep it from wiggling around. Time's come. we will put a little bit of fuel in the tank here and see if our fuel system's got any leaks in it. Well, I'd say we have a leak. I'm guessing the uh, float's not floating. Okay, so I gave the, the carburetor a couple taps. It seems to have reset that float and needle, so hopefully we can work on starting to crank this over. It is still dripping a little bit, but I think that's just because there's so much fuel in here now. But hopefully that won't cause an issue. Well, I think the time has come to try to see if we can't get this thing come to life. I'm not anticipating it working today, but we got spark, although it's kind of weak. We got fuel, we got compression. Hopefully this thing kicks over. I'd love to end this video with this thing running, but I'm running out of time, so we're gonna give this a quick try. If it doesn't work, it'll end up being a different video. So pretty much as soon as I started cranking this over, fuel started leaking out of the carburetor. I tried using the choke with my hand on and off, and fuel just kept leaking out. So there's still something wrong with this carburetor. We're gonna have to take it back out and take another look at it. And this is the point where I realized I swapped the fuel shutoff and the plug on the fuel separator when I rebuilt that. 
So I ended up draining all the fuel out, taking the plug out, taking the shutoff off, and flipping those two around. Well, we're right back where we were at the start of this video. The carburetor sitting on the workbench. This thing is kind of becoming a pain in my butt, which I kind of figured it would be. Um, parts are really hard to find for it. This needle, I don't think is right. I think that's part of the problem. I think it's letting too much fuel through because it's not the same shape, so it's probably making too big of a, a hole for fuel to go through. And I still think there's a problem with the float and the seat in there because when I tap on this thing, I can get the fuel to stop. But then as soon as it starts cranking and the float goes down, fuel just starts pouring out of the air intake and out of the little overflow hole here. So there's definitely something wrong inside of this guy. We'll have to figure that out. I may look at just getting a different carburetor. I don't want to. I'd like to try to use the original, but I'm having trouble finding the correct parts for it, obviously. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, that's unfortunately going to be it for this one. I kind of had a feeling it wasn't going to start. Still kind of disappointed. I really, really wish I could have gotten this thing started. I, I feel like I'm so close. I'm right there. But yet so far. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.